like, this is what we're going to do. We're going to dive right in. I used to do marketing and advertising okay. um, for, for big chain restaurants. Yes, and I you always, understood. Well, I always swore, like, because I saw it from a marketing side, that I would never, ever in a million years own a restaurant. <laughs> Um, and it, we weren't really supposed to. Like, we started out thinking we were going to own, oh, you know, we are going to start a little winery and maybe serve cheese. But we found, we stumbled on this big, French beautiful, you, yeah, you know, know, building, and it just, uh, it's all kind of a big accident. Can we talk we, about it now? The, yeah. The greatest interior sure. design. No, the so we, we have to complete the, we have to complete the circle because the name Bigsby's Folly, right? A little double entendre around the, the word folly. Right. So oh, yeah. Marlowe would talk about folly as a little bit of homage to the Roaring Twenties and the Siegfried Follies and all that kind of stuff. But the other part of the folly is everybody's heard the old saw, if you want to make a small fortune in the wine industry, start with a large one. Right? Okay. And we actually... Um, so what do you joke? It's for people yeah. that they're going to lose money, Chris. They're not yeah. actually uh-huh. So we, we actually debuted the concept uh, after we finally stood in our own misery for a long time with our friends down in Mexico. Uh, we thought, you know, let's take it to our friends and see what they think about the concept. Um, so we talked about that, and we said, okay, here's here's what we're going to do. Um, they were, well, maybe enthusiastic, um, <laughs> maybe not. House, but gonna, yeah, we yeah. we actually sold our house. We we traded in one one dream for another to to actually do this. Um, but they didn't they didn't call us crazy. But they did take the bottle of tequila away from me, so that was a good sign, right? Yeah. So the question is, did you go down there with like a taster for them then? Be like, well, taste it. You know, like, no. this is the no. shit we're working with. Well, it's this a good was way before. Yeah. We... Y'all were just. This is the baby the, yeah. brainstorm kind of just mm-hmm. lighting was just starting to crackle. Gotcha. Yeah. That's ballsy, you know, like for y'all to be like, you know, we haven't done this before. It's similar to like, you know, a bunch of stoners just start a podcast and expecting yeah. people to listen to it. Like, where do you start and then where do you go next? Like, so what's step two after step one, which was selling the house? What yeah. was it next? Let's start looking for dank ass, pro- or, you know, ball and digs. Absolutely. absolutely. And well, yeah, the, the selling of the house came uh, commensurate with finding this, this property. We looked for a long time, right? You guys already talked about it. Yeah, the hardest thing is to find vacant warehouse space here in Denver, Colorado, because you know the reason why, right? It's, yeah. it's all it's those all, damn stoners, exactly. Rowing and trimming over there, and those brewers. Yeah. Shout out to our friends in the brewery and the boot yeah. and the weed game. Like so it. how we how we actually found this location, I uh, I always call it midnight desper- desperation. We had we'd actually been in protracted negotiations for another space. Uh, a little bit away from here, and it fell out at the the last hour. We spent a fair amount of time and a lot of money, and so in a panic, right? Because time is money, and we were burning it and running out of our savings very quickly. Marla found this place online at 11:30 at night, so midnight desperation. When I get my best work, yeah. when he's in bed, long. Yeah. Seven thousand fired in bids. You know that second oh, yeah. bottle of wine. You're yep. like, oh my god, I got a great idea. Let's restore a badass. Well, we walked in and there's that. I don't know if you've seen the commercial about the couch and the credit card. It's like, oh my god, gotta have it. Um, but then it was like 7,000 square feet, much larger than what we ever intended to to engage in. Um, it was a bet the farm strategy. That's when we went home and said, okay, gotta have this location. Time to sell the house. So we traded one dream for another. I That's awesome. I kind of remember it slightly different. <laughs> well, was it better so, or worse or scarier? Well, just a little a different viewpoint. So I'm, you know, pounding the computer, you know, at midnight, shooting off locations to, to our broker. And I see just the facade of this place. I'm like, this place looks kind of cool. Prohibition kind of falling apart, old. So I, I want to go see this tomorrow. So we get in here. And, again, the road is, there's no road here. Everything is crumbled. There's, you know, homeless. There's, it's just it's just a really scary spot. We like to use the word decrepit. Yes. It I'm was, looking for a little spot like the wine and cheese y'all have. Yeah. That's what we're looking for, a, a podcast studio. So I'm, I'm taking tips Yeah, here. it was completely decrepit. And I walked in, and, again, it's just the four walls, but the ceiling's here. And I'm like, yeah, got to have it. And I think Chad said, where the hell are we? <laughs> I'm like, well, I think Brighton Boulevard's over there. Yeah. And, um, again, there was, there was nothing here. The bridge wasn't here. 
um, two and a half or three years ago when we found the property, it was out here. And I love when uh, people finally walk in our front door here after they've kind of been through the, the construction. And and, uh, Zeppelin wasn't here either. So, so y'all were like, uh, yeah. y'all OGs on the block? Y'all yeah. can start like shaking folks down if y'all want to. I hear that's like, that's rule number two. If you have first dibs on a corner, the wire says it. You can shake them down and move them off the corner. Yeah. We all remember Bumpy. Yeah. I mean, remember Marlo? <laughs> We go under the wire all day. <laughs> That's what we do on podcasters who try to overtake the Colorado scene. Well, yeah, you just got to smother them out. So, like, if you'll need any help, we know some real big bruisers. Yeah. Well, let I me mean, look what's around here now. It's crazy. <laughs> I mean, it has, and it's flourished. So now y'all are kind of, like, on the ground floor. I mean, a little bit before that kind of this neighborhood's boom, you know, started. Like, you can't find a space now, like you were saying, before Zeppelin. And now it's like... I guess the source, the first part of the source may not have been ready, the but the hotel, there. the hoodie wasn't, wasn't, and those apartments past Mr. Tuna and all that shit weren't there no. either. So, like, y'all were kind of, now it's just kind of blown up around y'all, so where you know, foot traffic is probably ten times what it was when you started. Absolutely. Well, it was zero before, so. Yeah. yeah. We, we stared at that pedestrian bridge. You guys can't see it over there, but we stared at that pedestrian bridge for a full year. Fully developed it was, waiting, waiting, for for the ele- <laughs> waiting for the elevator to get finished so they could open it. And, and it was like the Mervyn's commercial, like, right? open, open, open. Yeah. Um, and, and finally it did happen. So we are seeing a heck of a lot more foot traffic. And we were pioneers, not so much anymore, right? We yeah, feel like but, settlers now. Yeah. Well, right, but that's part of the Colorado. Hunter gatherer is the term we like to use. Yeah. Settlers <laughs> makes it sound like we aren't doing bigger and better so things every day. Well, that's the old we're, saw, right? The pioneers get the arrows, the settlers get the, See, the gold, we're, right? We're sure. west side Take rhino that. natives. Right, and you guys kind of you guys took on the Colorado spirit. Like everybody kind of comes out here for an adventure, and you guys seized one, and now you have this big space. The vaulted ceilings, everything in here, it's really cozy. Um, so I think y'all, I think y'all, really y'all lucked out here. Th- I don't know if it's luck, but it is hard work and, you know, good karma. When you put it out there in the world that not only do you feel that it's going to happen or, you know, like the 13th hour type situation, yep. 11th hour, whatever the saying is, um, that, you know, like when you have good karma, then hopefully eventually it comes back to you in some form or fashion. And it seems like y'all are good people that have been following their passion. So that's, it's nice to see that kind of come full circle. Yeah. You know, one thing I feel when I think of y'all is instead of, you know, we love our friends over at Blanchard and we love our friends at Carboy and all those other, you know, vineyards and wineries around town. Um, y'all have something a little different that maybe our listeners know about, maybe they don't. Y'all have the, uh, the vintner license, which is like the big dick license. <laughs> y'all have, you can serve your own wine here in house, but you can also serve food. You have a full bar, so you don't have to just be a wine lover, you know, like to be here. You can come enjoy delicious food and have a full drink. Who did you have to want to get one of those? <laughs> <laughs> like Mayor Hancock? Is the, that the a, I mean, I've tried is, to get him on our podcast like very 10 times. long and distinguished, I can tell you. So it was my job. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well. That was a Top Gun line. Thank you very much. That's from Top Gun. Yeah. We throw in a lot of movie quotes here and there. Yeah. Most of them are from Top, uh, Tom Cruise 80s movies. Yeah. So, sorry about my inappropriateness. Uh, it comes out with the bottle. I had a bottle before I got here. By the way. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, best we, best we know, we are actually Vintner's Restaurant number three license in Colorado. It's a little bit unique. Uh, has its restrictions, but you already extolled the virtues of it. Because what, what we didn't want is somebody showing up and you know, hu- uh, husband and wife are on a date and like that. And, you know, Because we have the ability, God forbid, you walk in the door and you want a cold frosty. In a case Colorado of emergency, Cola? yeah. In case of emergency, we're going to break the glass for you. We're going to serve you a beer. Right, and we have four local beers on tap. Um, we wanted to be able to to actually we're, we're proud of our wine, but it, we wanted to be able to service all needs. Right. And if we also want to provide the the idea of expiration wine, and, and you can't change out our lineup that often. So we have a, a, a lineup of other people's wines that complements ours. So if you don't like anything on our list, we're, we're gonna we're gonna try our best to find something that you're gonna like. But chances are we're gonna find something on our other people's wine list that you're going to like, or 
you know, have a beer or a cocktail instead. Right. And yeah. we have, we're sitting on, is that a Negroni or maybe an Old Fashioned somewhere? Yeah. We're mixing and matching, but yeah. I am, I'm hammering the red, as our listeners know. It's the only thing I drink, so my teeth are staying while I'm going to hell. It's the behavior I have. <laughs> That's our next thing. So we talked about the journey. We've talked about the foundation that we built. Let's talk about these fermented grapes that, you know, my God, Bacchus has brought us to yeah. this neighborhood. So where do we pick wines that y'all like to drink personally and start hunting that way? Was it like, a, I'm a dry red fan, so I'm going to try to service and supply dry reds? Or how did y'all, what, how did y'all come with the taste for the grapes to do this? Uh, so, yeah. That's Is there good, someone it's that's a great, It's a great question. Thank and, you. I'm a great and interviewer. It, and it goes back to kind of the... A little bit of the premise behind Bigsby's Folly of, you know, we originally intended, and how we actually fell into this, is doing an exploration around buying an actual winery. And what you do is you actually, you, you find that two-thirds of a typical winery sales are what's called their cellar door, which is, right, their place of business. And it's either in the form of people coming into the tasting room and buying wine or joining the wine club. And the aha moment for me, former consultant that I was, was, well, why the hell do you actually have to stick the cellar door where the grapes are grown? Stick it where the people are and allow the grapes to travel to the people. And we have a gen- and that's what we've tip- we have done. And when you divorce yourself from being in an actual vineyard and open yourself to being everything but the vineyard, you're able to source grapes from wherever you care. Best wine growing regions, you get to be selective. So you didn't, like, square pay yourself, like, oh, we're going to do just Napa's. Like, if no. y'all get in the Carmenere kick where y'all y'all want to bring some grapes up from South America, by God, y'all are going to do it. Absolutely. I'm a Carmenere fan. I have a friend yeah. that went down there and brought us back a bunch of wine from uh, Buenos Aires and Chile area. I mean, we devoured it. And, and we have, we're not we're not there yet, but we actually have designs because what we wanted to do is to demystify this winemaking process and involve people in the actual winemaking itself. You know, people come in, uh, drives our winemaker crazy. I'm not the winemaker. Our winemaker, Brian Graham, 24 years of winemaking experience. Formal training was in Bordeaux. So we are new world grapes, old world style. Um, complexity, structure, balance is what he strives for, and he does a great job. We allow, we, we, we basically rely on him to pick the grapes and find the vineyards. Um, I'm nowhere near that. It takes a lot of experience to get to the level he's at. But we have, right, in involving people in the process, we have thought about actually, because the sad thing about grapes is they only ripen once a year here in the northern hemisphere, bringing grapes in from the southern hemisphere, think oh, common air, fr- oh, okay. think, think Malbec, yeah. right, I'm and right. doing two crushes a year just to involve people in this great thing called wine. Love it. Yeah, love it. it's the thing down the road, right? We're not there yet. We're a small fry. You guys are smart, though, I'm picking up on that. They're thinking They're smarter, not moves. harder. Exactly. <laughs> y'all, y'all, y'all figure out, and you mentioned, you know, y'all are almost 40, similar to Chris. Almost 40, yes. Um, and so, you know, y'all learned a lot in y'all's time here. So Liver is substantially older, though. Huh? Liver is substantially older. Yeah, hi. Yeah. <laughs> the yellow hue is because I spend a lot of time at the pool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Okay, so uh, this is, I guess, another thing. Y'all have done a little bit something different, not only with you know how y'all approach the game, but also how you're bottling y'all's game as well. Y'all mm-hmm. have kind of become practical in the sense that y'all have a growlers club. I want to ask y'all about that. But also, y'all have uh, the coddle, a.k.a. the can bottle. Can it's bottle? like if a can inserted himself into a bottle and then just filled <laughs> the wine. It's the coddle. They're and coddlers. They're coddlers. And yeah. we want to talk about, because that's another thing where y'all are kind of thinking, you know, like where you didn't grow up sommeliers or, you know, the old world style. Yeah. You're, you're blending those two, and you're now here on the forefront of the bottling game, which is huge in Denver. I'll, so. turn, it over, I'll turn it over to Marla to, to talk about the actual coddle. And my only thought was, is like, if there's a benefit in my consulting days. I was consider myself to be a zero gravity resource, right? I, I never got immersed in any industry enough to become an expert in it, but I always came in as somebody that had um, ability to actually sniff out and, and walk a process and do able to problem solving, but I was never, why I call it zero gravity resources, I was never weighed down by the weight of how it's always been done. 
And that's the same thing that we brought to this. If, if anything, Martin and I, not being from the wine industry and not being restaurant operations, we came in with a fresh set of eyes. Um, at times, stupid moves we've made. We've made a fair amount of errors along the way. Yeah, exactly. Um, but we've made a fair amount of errors along the way. But we also brought a fresh set of, you know, thinking about a way that could be done in a different way. And that kind of like it leads into the coddle, you know, because a couple, you know, we're two years into this. For the first couple of years, we didn't plan for the success we're going to have. So everything we could have made. It's a great problem to have. Right? Yeah. Well, I know I know the, person, the same personal problems. Yeah. We're so goddamn successful. Successful. I don't know where to put all the money. Exactly. Yeah, I never would imagine this in a million years. <laughs> yeah. My parents are so damn proud. Yeah. And so